Now on BBC One Wales, week in, week out. A timeshare club has collapsed and dozens of Welsh people are out of pocket. Louise Elliott investigates. At first glance, this resort in the Canary Islands has everything you'd expect from a luxury holiday. Linda Harby certainly thought so when she invested thousands in timeshare to secure her place in the sun forever. But against Linda's wishes, these villas are now up for sale as buy-to-let holiday homes. She feels ripped off. Very angry. How stupid to be taken in like that. But then it seems so plausible. She's not the only one who dug deep and repeatedly spent thousands of pounds in what could turn out to be the biggest timeshare scandal. So Linda and dozens of families across Wales have paid out not once, not twice, but three times, and most of them have got absolutely nothing to show for it. How were so many people persuaded to part with so much money? looks fantastic. It is brilliant because, as you can see, it's child-friendly. Linda Harby has fond memories of this holiday with her daughter and grandson in the Canary Islands. So was this Reese's first holiday? Yes, it was. Yeah, first time flying and first time in a pool. They were at the Lanzarote Beach Club where Linda had a timeshare in the development known as LBC One. It's a lovely complex. Uh, very well maintained, spread out, different plazas, different levels, several bars, a uh, couple of nice little restaurants actually on the complex, right on the sea, and it was an excellent, excellent place, lovely place, high class, five star definitely, accommodation. So did you have any complaints about it while you were there at LBC One? Not at all, no. Not at all. The only complaint, if any, not about the accommodation, was about the salesmen that were always at your heels there, um, pestering you to go for different meetings, one sort or another. In the end, they gave in, and at a meeting were told about an even better resort. We were shown their show villa for Lanzarote Beach Club 2. The villas themselves were bigger. They had their own patios with more luxurious furnished, patio furniture. A bigger lounge, kitchen, fully fitted. Whirlpool baths in the bathrooms, which were bigger. Everything was bigger and grander. and Yes, definitely more luxurious. The total was £4,000 to upgrade to Lanzarote Beach Club 2. The Harbies thought it would be money well spent. They'd been through a harrowing time after the death of their teenage son, Tim, in a road accident. They wanted this to be a special way of remembering him. He loved his holidays and we had some monies from his company that we decided it would be an investment in Tim's memory to upgrade somewhere for us to go as well as our daughter and grandson. Lanzarote Beach Club members have secured for themselves freehold holidays forever, 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 forever. forever. Bryn Martin's a solicitor. He's well used to scrutinising small print and, like Linda, he was impressed with the plans for the new villas. He was given a free holiday at the existing Lanzarote Beach Club LBC1, provided he attend a sales meeting. What we were shown and what we were told was that, what do you think, basically, the facilities at, at the club as it is now? Fine, lovely, superb. What if we were to tell you that we were going to build a second stage to this, which 
I think that the, 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 the phrase used was Lancelotti Beach Club 2 whereby the facilities would be even better there would be a, a, an additional set of units which would be of even higher quality than those which we'd already stayed at and seen. Bryn was also taken around the show villa captured here in another holidaymaker's video. The sales pitch he had was similar to Linda's. We were also then taken again within the Lanzarote Beach complex to a dummy villa which showed um, exactly what we could expect quality wise uh, fittings, facilities wise within the, the villa. Now, the villa we were staying in was absolutely superb but this place was one notch up again. Bryn and his wife Caris bought off plan and paid just over £14,000 for two summer weeks at LBC2. We bought absolutely beyond any doubt whatsoever on an assurance that this place was being built it would be exclusive to people who had bought in to that section. They had no reason to suspect there'd be any problems. Lanzarote Beach Club seemed to be an established, thriving timeshare complex. The vision was to create the world's most luxurious holiday ownership resort. And in an idyllic spot on the beautiful island of Lanzarote in the Canaries, that vision has now become a reality. It was launched in the 1980s, when this video was made to attract potential buyers. Sheer heaven. The Lanzarote Beach Club is truly the ultimate holiday dream brought to reality. It is your own slice of paradise, and it's yours forever. Since For the first 10 years, most owners were happy. In the early days, LBC was one of the best in the business. Buyers were drawn in by the sales pitch, persuading them of the advantages of timeshare ownership. Lanzarote Beach Club members have secured for themselves freehold holidays forever, 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 forever. When you saw this, you weren't in any doubt that you wanted it. Oh no. Karen Smith has enjoyed holidays at LBC with friends who've been members since the early days. While there, she was invited to a meeting where grand plans for Lanzarote Beach Club 2 were revealed. You thought, yeah, this looks good. They explained it all to you with the swimming pool coming down the centre and all the lavishness of the place because they had an apartment already put out for you to go and look at the furniture, the quality of the kitchen and the bathroom and shower. And it was just so stupid a chance to miss, really. Did it ever cross your mind that you were taking <coughs> a huge risk, that you were buying something that at the time didn't exist? It's your dream, isn't it? And that was it. But because LBC1 was there, there was no reason to disbelieve that LBC2 wouldn't be there. So how much did you pay for this dream? About well, 10, 12,000 pounds. But despite the detailed plans, the idea of LBC2 never materialised into luxury villas. This is the site where they were supposed to be built. We've spoken to dozens of people who all paid up front to buy on the new development. So what does the Lanzarote Beach Club have to say about what's happened? It's extremely difficult to find out who actually runs LBC. The club spokesman used to be publicist Max Clifford. Here. He's being interviewed on the BBC's Watchdog programme. You get All that the money for a hole in the ground? Well, since no one offered them that, you know, I can only say that's their interpretation. If are they you, moaning? Are they whinging? Well, I they? think if you read the contract and you get exactly what that contract promises you, then you're whinging. Yes, I do. We asked Max Clifford to explain further, but he told us he no longer represents Lanzarote Beach Club. Instead, LBC's solicitor agreed to pass on our questions, although he wouldn't tell us who to. When we got a reply, it said the club had no knowledge of anything called Lanzarote Beach Club 2. So just let me get this straight. Hundreds of people who thought they were buying timeshare on a new development called LBC 2 were all totally wrong. How on earth could so many people all make exactly the same mistake? 
we looked again at the paperwork given to those who thought they were buying on the new development. There's no specific mention of LBC2 anywhere. But we now have evidence that sales staff were marketing a new development. One buyer secretly recorded a telephone call to LBC. He was anxious about delays in the building work. Andy, just tell me one thing, right? Are these units going to be built in by, by the year 2000? That's the opening date. They're actually opening, they're hoping to open on the 31st of December 1999. He later received this fax, further evidence that there were indeed plans for a new development. No stage did we think that this wasn't going to be built. How do you feel looking back on that now? Angry. Uh, angry at myself for being taken in. Um, very angry. And how stupid, how stupid to be taken in like that. But then it seems so plausible. Do you feel like you're being conned? Definitely, swindled. I'm absolutely 100% certain, and I would go on oath, I would go anywhere and swear before anybody that we were assured and we bought on the basis that we were going to be owners of two weeks in a newly constructed, newly developed facility which everyone knows or knew as Lanzarote Beach Club 2. Bryn and Linda were told that because the new villas weren't built yet, they could continue to stay at LBC1. But in the meantime, guess what? The people at LBC had come up with another sales scheme. A new point scheme called IVC was introduced to Linda during a free holiday. On the LBC. Hey, show your badge. Linda and her husband took friends with them. The three couples had a ball. <laughs> Soon, the IVC sales team visited. She said, were we aware that Lanzarote Beach Club had been taken over by a company called IVC, who were a holiday points club? We then asked how it would affect the Lanzarote Beach Club people if they didn't upgrade to IBC. And they told us that the membership fee, the maintenance fees, sorry, for LBC would be made that expensive that people wouldn't afford to go there. They also told us that IVC people would be given priority on LBC2 and LBC1. So if we didn't upgrade, then our chances of holidaying there would be remote. So having spent all that money already, did you feel that you had much choice? No, we didn't. So how much more did that cost you? £3,750. In total, Linda had spent nearly £9,000. What had she bought again? Lanzarote Beach Club members have secured for themselves freehold holidays forever, 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 forever. For those who stayed with LBC, there were still more shocks in store. They were being asked to fork out for a big increase in the annual maintenance fee. But that's not all. Out of the blue came a demand for even more money. This special levy came. I don't really know what it was for. It was just something they sent. And you either paid it or you didn't. And we didn't. We didn't pay our maintenance either. So we just walked away to think that we'd paid £10,000 and I hadn't had anything at all. 
Why did you not <coughs> pay the levy and the maintenance fee? Married to a very shrewd gentleman who says, I don't like the look of this, I'm not paying this. And that's what was it. Just, and we weren't in a position to pay it anyway. Others did pay up. We, in our optimism, and again, unfounded optimism, decided we, we, we would pay that. Subsequently, we received a request again for an additional levy. By this time, we were getting extremely um, disappointed, annoyed, frustrated. We paid the first additional levy. Subsequently, another additional levy came in, and my wife and I decided that, that time enough is enough. We received a letter effectively telling us that because we hadn't paid the levies, our membership at the Lanzanotti Beach Club was terminated. What did you think when all this was going on? First of all, you got the demands, then you didn't pay, and you were told your investment was down the pan, effectively. Well, uh, ab absolutely frustrated, very, very angry, annoyed at ourselves, annoyed at myself as a, a lawyer, having been effectively conned into parting with money on what, what I can from my experience, on entirely false pretenses. There is no other way of putting it. Last year, the solicitor shelled out a thousand pounds in fees and extra charges before cutting his losses and quitting LBC. But those who carried on and did pay the second demand say they went on to receive a third demand for even more money. So what's LBC's justification for the extra levies? They say they were needed to pay the club's debts made worse by dwindling membership. The majority of timeshare is well run and those who promote the industry dismiss LBC's argument. A committee has a responsibility not to allow a deficit to occur in, in, to the extent that this appears to have occurred. Um, if it's because owners have dropped out of paying the maintenance fees for their weeks, then within the constitution the committee have the power to repossess those weeks and then they should m actively get involved in disposing of those weeks so that the owners who are paying are not paying for somebody else who hasn't paid. But many of those who felt forced out by the extra levies have told us they strongly suspect there was more to it. The whole setup is so suspicious that if you put the thing together and how can a place which was so busy and thriving in 1998 when we were there six years ago, which as it is now, as I understand it, has no time shareholders there, well, how can that be unless it was a deliberately orchestrated manoeuvre on their part? LBC says that's an absurd claim without any foundation whatsoever. So what's happened to all the holiday time members had paid for but lost by refusing to cough up the extra levies? Last year, the resort's name was changed. Under a new company, the villas are being marketed through travel agents for ordinary holiday makers, not timeshare members. If these were definitely timeshare weeks that people had had cancelled, and the management company were renting them out, then yes, that money should have gone to the club to pay for the outstanding debt. Clients can relax in overstuffed cushions on the sofa. Over the years, the sales team at LBC has worked hard. They've sold timeshare in these villas, they've persuaded holiday makers to buy new villas which were never built, and then they told people their investments would become worthless unless they upgraded to a new holiday point system. Now, a separate company is renting out the original villas. Some of those caught up in this have asked their Euro MP for help. In essence, it's a sort of game of musical chairs in which uh, you start off with a whole range of people who've taken out contracts, uh, timeshare contracts, on what's uh, basically pretty good accommodation. Uh, and then as the, uh, as the music plays, there are fewer and fewer people, but you find you don't end up owning the chairs. The chairs are taken away and they're being sold, and at the end of the day, people end up paying to stay in the game, but they end up with nothing. It is your own slice of paradise and it's yours forever, 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 forever. LBC was expelled from the two main timeshare exchange organisations, 
which enable members to go to other resorts worldwide. So what happened to those who bought into the holiday points system, IVC? Within a year, Linda Harby had paid out a total of £9,000. She'd bought timeshare at LBC, upgraded to LBC2, which was never built, and finally she transferred to IVC. Using the points system, she arranged to go to a hotel in Cyprus. This was not a five-star hotel. The rooms were very basic, to say the least, very sparse decoration. There were burnt ring marks on unit, kitchen units. The shower head was held up by wire. Um, very substandard, really. Friends of ours bought into IVC because it allowed them to go anywhere else that they wanted to as well. Um, I think they've been twice with it and it's just been horrendous. The accommodation has been, oh, atrocious. I don't think my friend will ever use it again. Max Clifford's answer from a previous programme sounds familiar. No, because if you read the contract and you get exactly what that contract promises you, then you're whinging. Yeah. Do you think those nice people... Were they really saying that hundreds of people have all made exactly the same mistake again? Do you get the feeling there's a pattern emerging here? We wanted to know what had happened to the few hundred LBC members who kept on paying those extra levies. They were being asked to vote on winding up LBC. The count was due to take place last month. We actually arrived at the said time and place. There was nobody there representing Lanzarote Beach Club, had no idea what we were on about. We showed them the letter, they denied any knowledge of it whatsoever. Yet, bizarrely enough, a week later, our members received a letter to say that that vote had gone ahead, the meeting had gone ahead, and it had duly been decided that the club would be wound up. We reckon Lanzarote Beach Club members paid out tens of millions of pounds between them for timeshare they no longer own. This could be the biggest timeshare scandal yet. When some members tried to complain, they say they came up against a nameless, faceless organisation. Many have told us how difficult it was to get answers from anyone. If companies are engaging in entirely legitimate business practices. Why have they made it so difficult for people to find out who, who they are, who, are, who is running the show, who are the shareholders, who are the directors, who is the man who is really in charge? Lanzarote Beach Club was set up in 1985 by a Canadian called David Sterling. We've discovered he was once convicted and jailed for fraud. Sterling seems to disappear from the paper trail in the late 1990s. But we found dozens of other companies behind the timeshare operation. Some are based in the UK, Spain and Holland. But many others are in tax havens like the Bahamas, British Virgin Islands and Liberia. Strip away the companies, look at what the reality of the situation is that is faced by those people who signed these timeshare contracts in the first place. I think they feel the subject of daylight robbery, and I've got a lot of sympathy for them in that view. There's lots and lots of people out there that must be in the same situation as us. How can that happen? I thought things were put in place not to allow this to happen to people. But it is one big scam. The answer to all of this is if there is no redress, if there is no route that people are able to take in order to protect their consumer rights, then the politicians should be changing the law to ensure that there are. Spanish police are also on the case. They've asked us to send our evidence to their investigating team. But some LBC members are attempting to bring the club to justice themselves. All our members are that keen for justice that we are taking proceedings in Madrid against um, several named individuals who we believe have 
been in the wrong over the last 15 years have um, been at fault for many, many issues. Um, we are taking it there in the hope to prove that they have, have been wrong, to gain the justice we believe that we deserve. Just a week after LBC was wound up, a totally separate company began using this promotional DVD. Sands Beach Villas are being sold as a holiday version of Buy to Let, with 60% of the rent deducted as commission. They're being sold from this new sales office at prices of up to £263,000. Something I paid 14000 for is now being sold off to someone else, and obviously um, I think that's despicable. There are also plans for another development next door. The land next door to Lanzarote Beach Club 1 is now planned to become a resort called Mayor Canarius. Um, there are lovely images of how it is going to look, how it is going to be built, and they are just in the process of, of getting ready to start selling those. One familiar face throughout has been Simon Goff. The manager in LBC days, he's still the frontman at the resort now. For a while, he was on the committee which ran LBC. So did he know what was going on behind the scenes back then? We faxed, we wrote, we emailed. And his response? Total silence. LBC say they are not linked with Sands Beach Villas. But what about those who are still out of pocket? The big question that many want answered is will they get any money back? Some people who paid for LBC2 with credit cards have been reimbursed. Others are still fighting. The activities that have been ongoing, in my mind, certainly would give us a case for damages in the courts and very, very possibly recourse to criminal action brought by the police or the fraud squad. Now, unfortunately, because they're not in England and Wales, but they are within, um, technically, Spain, and Spanish law applies, then the situation is more complex. Karen has no choice but to put her £10,000 loss down to experience. When you were there, you felt secure. You felt that you were doing the right thing. I could really scream now, but you've got to look behind, you've got to get on with it. It's a big debt to forget and then have nothing for it either. Linda Harvey has been fighting to get her money back for nearly four years. I would like to think we could get something out of it. Um, it's quite a lot of money. Um, money we got from losing our son. which we thought were, we was investing into holidays in his memory. And they've taken that from us. And that's the reason that I'm like a terrier with a bone to try and get something back for Tim. Week in, week out, we'll be back with a new series in the spring.